What pops into your mind when you hear the word liberation? The word liberation comes from the Latin word liberatus, which literally means to set free or to deliver, and can easily apply to a myriad of different topics from politics and religion to science and industry. Particularly in the copper industry, the word liberation applies to the act of freeing copper specifically from refinery bleed electrolyte. The process that starts with mining and carries on through smelting and electro-refining is complex with many process operations. Today, we will take a closer look at the story of liberating copper. As the impure copper from the anodes dissolves into solution and is replated or deposited onto the cathode as pure copper, the dissolution process is faster than the plating process, causing a gradual buildup of copper ions in the refinery electrolyte. The copper concentration continues to increase along with other impurities such as nickel, zinc, arsenic, bismuth, antimony, and many others. In order to control the copper concentration and other impurities in the electrolyte, a solution bleed is required, also known as a copper liberator circuit. Copper liberator circuits use electrowinning to remove the copper in various depletion stages. By the way, we did a video about the basics of electrowinning. I'll leave a link to the video in the description below. Conventional electrowinning circuits are susceptible to impurities in the electrolyte, such as arsenic, bismuth, antimony, etc. And therefore, as the copper is depleted from solution, the quality of copper cathode is compromised. A typical copper liberator circuit, using conventional electrowinning, produces anode-grade copper that is recycled back into the anode casting furnace, while contaminated copper sludge is recycled back to the smelter. This results in a high circulating copper load in the integrated smelter refinery and high working capital. Furthermore, copper refinery electrolyte contains high arsenic and antimony, which under the right conditions can produce arsine and stibine gases, both of which are extremely toxic when the copper is depleted to low enough concentrations. An ideal alternative for copper liberator circuits to recover saliable copper cathode from refinery bleed while improving the health and safety of the liberator operation is to employ emu electrowinning. The emu cell increases the efficiency of copper plating by using a unique cylindrical cell that significantly increases the recovery efficiency and product purity. A typical emu liberator circuit produces high purity saliable copper cathode as the primary product, while only a small amount of copper that must be recycled back to the anode furnace. This significantly reduces the recirculating copper load and working capital, as well as improves first pass recoveries which decrease operating costs. The closed nature of the emu cell eliminates hazardous acid mist and coupled with the ability to monitor individual cell voltages significantly improves the health and safety of liberator circuits by eliminating the risk of arsine exposure. The now decopperized bleed solution can be further treated to recover the acid and nickel values. One common method is evaporation to concentrate the nickel with subsequent crystallization to produce crude nickel sulfate, which can be sold as is with the so-called black acid, neutralized in a separate treatment facility. Concentration of nickel in a sulfuric acid solution like this is about 20 to 25%. Sometimes, if the level of nickel is not high enough, additional nickel sulfate is added to aid with crystallization. Despite the seeming simplicity of this process, many disadvantages are inherent, such as safety risks from handling the very acidic black acid and increased exposure to solutions of high temperatures due to the nature of the evaporator. High operating costs, since the evaporator requires power to heat the solution and subsequent treatment or neutralization. Unsustainability, since black acid that is produced has low or no market value and is typically sent for neutralization as waste. So is there a better way to treat the decopperized solution to create more value? Many copper refineries that are embracing zero discharge are abandoning evaporation and crystallization, electing instead for an acid purification unit to treat the decopperized nickel solution using ion exchange to recover the sulfuric acid and produce a deacidified nickel solution. Now that the sulfuric acid has been isolated from the bleed electrolyte, the concentrated and purified acid can be recycled back to the refinery. The nickel solution is then treated with reagents to precipitate the impurities producing a nickel sulfate solution from which nickel can be electro one using, for example, the emu electro winning cell. The final result is a high purity nickel cathode that is perfectly suited for sale. So, 
What's the value for a copper refinery to upgrade their liberator circuit? Comparing conventional methods of decopperization and nickel recovery with advanced circuits incorporating EMU, APU, EMU, it is clear that there are many advantages. In summary, an EMU, APU, EMU circuit will improve health and safety. There is no tertiary liberator sludge to clean out, no acid mist exposure, and no potential for arsine or stibine gas to be generated. Lower operating costs. Lower working capital due to fewer copper recycles, recovery of acid rather than neutralization, significantly lower ventilation requirements, and low maintenance and low labor. Realize nickel byproduct credits. Recover nickel directly as high purity cathode. Improve impurity control. Bleed impurities to emu, recover copper and nickel directly as saliable products. Enable expansion capacity. More saliable copper from emu liberators, coupled with the ability to convert existing liberator cells to refining cells to increase refinery capacity. I hope now you better understand the process of liberating copper from mined ores. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.